So shoulder arthritis, this is a very common cause of shoulder pain, particularly in folks over the age of 60. This is a, an animation of shoulder arthritis. All joints in the body have a smooth white uh, covering, uh, similar to this here. But as you can see here, the surface is very rough in this animation. This is shoulder arthritis. Here's an intra-op picture of a shoulder. You have the ball side of the shoulder and the socket side of the shoulder here. And you're supposed to have a nice white surface and you have absolutely none on both surfaces of the joint here. This is a severely arthritic shoulder. And this is actually exposed underlying bone on both sides of the shoulder. So these are two x-rays of the shoulder here. On the left, this is what a normal shoulder x-ray should look like. You have a nice round shoulder. You've got a nice joint space between these two bones here. Um, this is the joint space here. Um, on the right here though, in sharp contrast, you can see that the ball side of the shoulder has actually become more box-like and there are large bone spurs on the uh, bottom of the shoulder here. There's virtually no joint space left in this patient here as well. And you can see a severe thickening of the bone on both sides. So symptoms, um, folks typically complain of uh, pain aggravated by activity and stiffness in particular. Um, it's typically seen in folks over the age of 60, although it can be seen in younger folks. Non-operative treatment. So first line is oral anti-inflammatories like Advil or Aleve. Um, also physical therapy. This is really designed at stretching the tight inflamed shoulder joint capsule. Um, injections, this does work for some people with shoulder arthritis. So these are the type of exercises. These are shoulder joint capsule stretches uh, that are given in the office to patients or that your therapist would be performing. And these uh, exercises are really um, designed to give you more motion and stretch that tight joint camp capsule to help with pain relief. So injections with the shoulder, steroid is definitely the more commonly used uh, injection type, also known as corticosteroid for shoulders. Um, in my experience, um, this doesn't work for a lot of people, particularly those who have moderate to severe shoulder arthritis. Um, PRP, this is a new technique um, that, I, that I use in the office as well. Uh, there's a lot of literature coming out on PRP and shoulder arthritis and knee arthritis, and it's showing a lot of promise with regards to pain relief with uh, arthritis of the joint. Um, bear in mind, PRP does not um, help you grow cartilage. It's really to uh, decrease pain. So the, uh, PRP, what, the, what it stands for is platelet-rich plasma. Your blood is drawn in the office. It's spun in a machine in a centrifuge and healthy cells are filtered out that promote healing and decrease inflammation. And this, in my experience, works a lot better um, than steroid for shoulder arthritis. Unfortunately, it's new. So a lot of insurances aren't covering it, but it does work well for some people. So operative treatment for shoulder arthritis, there's really two main types of surgery. There's shoulder arthroscopy, minimally invasive surgery, and then there's shoulder replacement surgery. So shoulder arthroscopy. Um, this is usually reserved for cases of mild shoulder arthritis. Um, and the idea behind this surgery is you're releasing this stiff inflamed joint capsule of the patient to give them more motion and ultimately less pain. Obviously, they're still gonna have arthritis. This doesn't add cartilage back to the shoulder, but it can help with pain relief, particularly when you're treating associated pathology like a rotator cuff tear or a biceps tear. 
So shoulder replacement surgery, this, this is a great operation. It's usually performed on patients with moderate to severe uh, shoulder arthritis. There's 90% good to excellent outcomes. Um, the diseased arthritic bone of the shoulder is replaced with metal and plastic implants, similar to a hip or a knee replacement. And there really have been significant advances in shoulder replacement surgery and surgery, surgery techniques for shoulder replacement and implant technology over the past 10 years. So shoulder replacement surgery and recovery. So folks, uh, they typically go home or the following day after shoulder replacement surgery. Um, depending on the patient's insurance or medical comorbidities, the surgery is either performed in a surgery center or a hospital. Uh, folks are typically immobilized in a sling for four to six weeks, depending on the type of shoulder replacement. Uh, and patients start therapy within a week of surgery and full recovery can take six months to a year to reach maximal medical improvement. So there's two uh, main types of shoulder replacements. There is the anatomic shoulder replacement this is a conventional ball and sock, socket shoulder replacement surgery that's performed on folks who have glenohumeral joint arthritis with an intact rotator cuff. What that means is no significant rotator cuff tearing, okay? The second type is reverse shoulder replacement surgery. Now, this is a non-anatomic shoulder replacement. I'll talk about that later performed on patients who have arthritis and who have large rotator cuff tears that are not amenable to surgical fixation. This is a picture of a conventional ball and socket anatomic shoulder replacement. Um, as you can see here, a white polyethylene plastic socket has been glued into the socket side of the shoulder, okay? And on the ball side of the shoulder, a metal ball and stem have been placed to replace the arthritic bone. What I've started using in my practice over the past few years, which is great, is actually stemless anatomic shoulder replacement, uh, where you don't even need a stem anymore. You can place a metallic head with, uh, this company calls it a nucleus, um, there's no stem, as you can see, and, um, you know, there's less surgical time when you perform it this way, better fit, and definitely less blood loss. Um, you do cement a uh, plastic polyethylene socket on the socket side of the shoulder still. Though. And then last, we have the reverse shoulder replacement. So the reason it's, why is it called a reverse? The reason why it's called a reverse is this. As you can see here, we actually screw a ball on the socket side of your shoulder, and then we place a stem with a socket on the ball side of your shoulder. Hence the term reverse shoulder replacement. Now, once again, this type of shoulder replacement is done for folks who have moderate to severe shoulder arthritis and have large rotator cuff tears that are not amenable to fixation. 